Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to say goodbye. No. This is not about all of you and us. We are not talking about the owner of a giant ship, whose time has come to say goodbye to his ship. Ships that were invested millions of dollars to build one day have become obsolete, rusty, and weak, and have to be retired. Hi folks, by 2021, over a thousand ships will have disappeared in this way. What will happen to them? Welcome to our channel. In this edition, we will show you what fate awaits the ships that were worth millions of dollars. Interesting story, isn't it? So, let's get started. But first, please like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any more great videos. How do you dismantle a ship in a demolition yard? Ships are huge pieces of resources that are of great value to humanity. For example, the longest ship in the world, the Seawise Giant, weighed about 83,000 tons of drainage water, is 458 meters long, and if it were standing, would be taller than the Eiffel Tower, the Empire State Building, and the Petronas Twin Towers in Kuala Lumpur. The screw propeller alone weighs 50 tons and the rudder of the ship is 230 tons. When it comes to such a large piece of steel, it cannot simply be destroyed. This is why ships are usually sent for dismantling after 25 to 30 years of service. The Seawise Giant was no exception. There are several ways to dismantle a ship, which determines the cost of dismantling and the safety of workers. In developed countries, green recycling is practiced in dry and soft docks. Dry dock dismantling is considered more environmentally friendly, as it prevents harmful substances from leaking into the sea, but it is also, however, the most expensive method of disposal. Here's how the Kami freighter, which ran aground off the coast of Scotland, will be dismantled in exemplary fashion in 2020. The ship, which is approximately 90 meters long and another 13 meters wide, was taken to a dock and dried in Quieter Harbor. When the water is removed with pumps, a 160 square meter space is created where heavy machinery can move safely. When it comes to dismantling, it is important to remove the sewage known as bilge, which contains impurities and harmful liquids, such as machine oil from the ship. Bilge is caused by water leakage or condensation on board. This water can mix with petroleum products, such as fuel oil and lubricating oil, in the machinery and other compartments, making it harmful to people and the environment. This is why they need to be pumped out before dismantling. Liquids such as hydraulic fluids, lubricants and fuels are also removed. All mobile electronic equipment and other items and equipment that can be resold are removed from the vessel. Demolition also involves safe separation of hazardous materials. For example, asbestos is removed, stored properly, and then recycled after detoxification according to environmental regulations. After these preparations, the hulls are cut into 300-ton pieces in the thermal lance and further broken down into smaller pieces. At this dock, the iron, copper and aluminum are sent to steel mills, where they are melted down into new metal products. Recycling makes it possible to produce metals below cost and use less ore. This recycling is a very beneficial process. Dismantling with the ship docked on the beach. As mentioned, dry dock dismantling is an expensive method, but there is a different approach that awaits many of the ships sent to demolition yards in India, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. It is not environmentally friendly, but it is a powerful method. The ships are pushed onto the beach at high tide and run aground, where they are subsequently dismantled in the same way as in a dry dock. This is a good way for the captain and crew to show their skills, because the ship can capsize when it runs aground, but it is a combination of a gently undulating coastline, high tides, and above all cheap labor. This is what makes running aground a conventional ship dismantling technique. About 80% of all ship dismantling in the world takes place in developing countries in Asia. 
After running aground, a ship graveyard emerges on the beach, and this is where very meticulous work is used. It is like a giant anthill, where everyone is absorbed in their work. In just three months, a medium-sized cargo ship with an unloading capacity of 40,000 tons can be dismantled by 50 workers. What is being done there? The labor and security measures are secondary, but what has to be done remains the same. Everything that might have value is removed. The ship is cut into pieces and the scrap metal is put up for sale. From the point of view of environmental protection and human safety, this cannot be called the best dismantling method. That is why there are strict regulations in Europe and that dismantling has to be done in accredited dismantling yards. To get around the regulations, ships are sold to another party, change ship registration and are sent for dismantling. But that doesn't always work. For example, in 2018, the Rotterdam District Court found a European company guilty of violating EU law when it sent ships to India and Bangladesh for dismantling. If such measures are taken all the time, that would be great for the environment and human safety. The method of stranding ships on beaches in the future will be a thing of the past. At the moment, however, demolitions are actively taking place on Asian beaches and there are a multitude of ships waiting to be demolished. When the demolition is complete, the ships will disappear, leaving nothing behind and leaving empty beaches where another ship can be brought in. This is how the Seawise Giant, the longest tanker in the world, ended its service life in 2010. That scrap could have been made into a new car or maybe even a ship again. A 36-ton anchor is all that remains as a reminder to humanity of the old tanker. The anchor is on display at the Hong Kong Maritime Museum. Method of dismantling and sinking a ship to make an artificial reef. Here we present a more interesting method of dismantling a ship. Take, for example, the United States Coast Guard patrol ship Mohawk. The Mohawk had its launching ceremony in 1934 and was used by the armed forces until 1948. For the next 30 years, the Mohawk became a civilian pilot boat before being used as a museum, but when the museum went bankrupt, the ship was sunk and the process was filmed. Of course, the Mohawk went through the necessary dismantling process before sinking and was blown up and sent to the bottom of the sea on July 2, 2012. Now, the Mohawk is the artificial fish reef of the Veterans Memorial and a good place for divers at the same time. If you think it's rare for a ship to be sunk, let us tell you that it's actually a common thing. Similar fates have happened to the landing ship Spiegel Grove, the training ship Texas Clipper, the aircraft carrier Urakani, and dozens of other vessels. Ships being sunk to turn them into fish reefs is a great idea, and it's a great idea because even after a lifetime at sea, they will live on to entertain divers and provide shelter for small fish and other sea creatures. Demolition of Shipwrecks Demolition of Shipwrecks You never know what can happen to a ship at sea, even with the most up-to-date navigation system. Ships can run aground in shallow water, shipwrecks, or run aground to save lives or valuable cargo. These vessels are often unable to move because the damage is too great when it is also difficult to transport them to the dock. Local deforestation becomes the only realistic option in terms of cost. This is exactly what happened to the Ferry River Dance while sailing in the Irish Sea in 2008. A huge wave hit the ship and it ran aground near Blackpool, England. The force of the waves was so strong that much of the cargo fell off, and the ship was stranded on land tilted 60 degrees. Despite the bad weather, the crew and passengers were rescued without any major problems. It was also possible to recover some of the cargo from the ship. The ship was supposed to be taken out of the sea in February 2008, but a large number of tourists heard about the accident and visited the nearby town of Clevelez. Unfortunately, the rescue operation was not successful, and a ship had to be dismantled.
150 tons of fuel were removed as quickly as possible. The demolition of the ship took place between April and October. Despite a few accidents, including fire on board, the project came to a successful conclusion. And it's time for this video to come to an end. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. And if you liked it, please leave your like. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you are not subscribed yet. Oh, and activate the notifications. You will be the first to know when new videos are released. And we will also try to make sure that new videos are interesting for you. You can wait. We have two more great videos to point you to. See you in the next video. Bye.